women come together, when women support each other, magic happens. Amen. In the life of a woman who calls herself triumphant, rising from ashes to me is transitioning from tears to triumph, from tragedy, tragedy and tribulations, mm. because there's no triumph without trials. Mm. Like a phoenix rising from ashes, greatness can be pulled from unpleasant places. Nelson Mandela said it well when he said that victory does not reside in just never falling, but in falling every time when we fall. Mm. Thank you so much for this opportunity and a great morning to every phenomenal woman. I am Triumph Viva as I was introduced and thanks for such a great morning. Ambition, taking it as a triumphant woman, as I've said, that trials can give about a triumph. You cannot triumph, you cannot be called a triumph if you have not gone through trials. You cannot say you are victorious if there was no battle or anything to reference from that you exactly uh, do define or stand the terms of being called victorious. Ambition is fueled by knowledge. I believe that for you to ever dream of something, it must be because there was some knowledge or there are some aspirations that caused you to dream of being a doctor, to dream of being any other thing that you ever think of as a woman. It's one thing to have reason. It's one thing to have lived a life of satisfaction, a life of pursuing, a life of being up and then falling from it. But what if we are saying to you, rise from your ashes, but to what? If you have lived a life that, um, you know, if you have been, let me give an example with career, if you have been up on your feet, running a career that was successful, living a married life that was successful, if you fall, at least you've got a frame of reference to rise and say, this is what I'm rising to. You can draw reference and courage and you've got a perspective of what you want to be. But what if you've never really stood up to anything in life? What if you could never lift a finger? What if you were born in a community like mine, where there are no role models, where there is nothing to look up to? I hear that I have to rise, but to what am I rising to? It's one thing to have known, to have lived a life. It's one thing to have dreams that are aspired by role models. They are aspired by the things that you see, you see around you. But it's one other thing to be told to rise up and go and you don't know, where do I start? That is the life that I, when I thought of rising from ashes, I then looked up to triumph and say, by the way, how does it relate to a woman like me who does not know what I should rise to, who does not have a frame of reference of what do you want to be? I see in my community there are teachers and police and nurses. Is that all that all of us, all the children that are being born in this village, are we all going to be, to be doing that? There's only one hospital. There's only one clinic. There's only one school, one primary school. There's only one high school. Rise to what exactly? That was my life. Oh, also my thought of rising for my ashes. Ashes survived because there was fire, but what if you grew up in a community where there was nothing? As, he, as she has described in my bio, from a community of dying dreams, I stand up and realize that I have actually broken the barriers of what is expected from a village girl from, let me say, someone coming from my tribe, um, where you are overlooked, where you are always referenced to the bad thing, or go and jam changana, or be and jam changana, all those things. Just beside other prevailing odds, as a child, things don't mean to harm you, can kill you, even though they mean nothing. As a child, I thought as a child, things that don't mean anything, because now to me it means nothing. But those are things that are meant to steal your future and the perspective of how 
how you see yourself. Coming from a society that like role models, you see, when you go grow up from a privileged families, family, you get at least the privilege to sit in tables and hear conversations that can evoke and spark curiosity to, to, to aspire to be some things. Where I come from, we call the night time where we sit in the table. All you ever hear is who is sick, who is being beaten by a husband, who has died. And the most that you can hear is at least she's getting married. Mm -hmm. That is the only success that you can ever hear that someone is getting married. And there is really nothing from those conversations that drive you to have an ambition to be a better person. Looking back, Every one of us should look back and be unapologetic of the woman they have become because you've paid a price so you wish to become her. Mm. You are no longer the person that you were. I look back at my own self and say I cannot sleep on triumph. Rising from where she was without a frame of reference, I stand as the possibility that you can win, fight a battle for the very first time without a, from, a frame of reference and win anyway, without pointing to uncle, to auntie and say, if they could do it, I can do it too. It can begin with you. Mm. Sometimes it has to begin with you, to break generational cases, mm. to break generational norms. The best you can be in justicia, if you manage to pass me trick, is to become a waitress, because the only job opportunity surrounding the area is Kruger National Park. So you can become a waitress in one of the restaurants. And maybe after 15 years, they can call you a head chef and then you can be a manager when you are 60. If you do manage to pass me trick. It's an easy trip to drop out because of teenage pregnancy or financial uh, crisis at home. But somehow, I knew some curiosity came up to this woman who was raised by, I was raised by my, my late grandparents. I was born from, from teen parents, so I never even had the privilege to meet my mom until I was around 18. I was raised by my grandparents. I knew that somehow, beyond the village walls, there should be hope. This can't be it to life. And remember, this is a, a, a generational norm where whatever you can become is comforted. If you can become a teacher, great. I am not so young that someone can still say, if you become a teacher, there's nothing wrong with it. These are things, we need a teacher. Triumph is standing here because there's someone who taught me how to write my name. But isn't there more to an African child than that? I was coming from a community where if you can only become a police, it was comforted. But Triumph had a dream beyond that. Growing up, I could not even lift a finger. As the child who was obese, I come from a, an obese, a history of obese family. So not only was I supposed to rise against poverty and limitations and lack of role models, I had to survive bullying and body shaming. Yeah. Those are the things that I had to go through. As a child who could only sit at the back, where we are going much I mean, why are you attracting more attention to yourself? Those are the things that I had to rise above. Remember, these are generational norms. Why are you rising above them? Uncle was like that. Grandmother was like that. But the Samaritan woman that we are waiting for is not coming. Mm. Nobody saves us but ourselves. Yes. I had to. I was not happy with triumph. I looked around me, and it was just all odds. Nothing seemed to be right. I was not happy with the fact that I don't know my parents. I was not happy with the fact that I'm just with this old man and an old woman, and then I'm obese, and then I face bullying at school. What's happening with my life? But I thank God for the name Triumph, which I was given by my dad, who is just a teenager. I don't think he, he was a teenager. I don't think he really knew what the name Triumph mm. meant by then. Mm. And yeah. it did follow me because I had a positive mindset. Sometimes, sometimes we live among people as much as we are in the world, but we are not of the world. Mm. I had a different idea mm. of the woman that I wanted to become. The circumstances do not change before they change in the mind. Mm. You've got to see it first. That's why when God called Abraham, before he put Abraham in the promised land, 
Abraham had to see it to believe it, and it had to first exist in the mind. Freedom is a bloody business. You have to pay the price to become who you want to be. You have to pay the price to rise. Because whatever shackles that are holding you won't just let you go. There will be a struggle and you must be ready to fight. We might speak to it as a as an easy thing that rise from your ashes, break free from your chains. But the truth is freedom is a bloody business. Look at South Africa. The freedom that we're enjoying today was planted, or I can say it was watered by blood and tears. And so in your life, that is the plain truth that there are things that you have to do. There are miles that you have to walk. You must do things differently. I had to be the barrier breaker in my family so that those who come after me do not have to pay the price. It starts with one. Every rich family has a person who stood in the gap and take the nails and take the critics and take the disappointments and the no's so that they can say in that family they are doing well. It starts with one person. And I was ready to take that so that my kids don't have to experience what I experience. Can you imagine when you are just a child who is wearing size 40 with finances that are not good at home? You have that one skirt. You are living with your grandmother and your skirt is up to here and you have to go to school and face all those bullying. I did not want that for my children and I was ready to pay the price. I will repeat it again, freedom is a bloody business. Mm. Whatever shackles, whatever ashes you are in now, mm. unfortunately, they will not go and just change after this. There is a price to pay. It is by being determined. Where there is a will, there is a way. Mm. One has to be willing to truly rise mm. and pay the price. Mm. My confidence was stolen and my identity was stolen. The 10 years are the years where you are trying to find yourself and identify yourself. I think the teen years are the preparations of the adult that you are going to be. And my identity was stolen as a child who had no confidence, who could not stand in front. To someone who is standing here today, I had to pay that price. The price to the promised land where I wanted to be. When I thought it could not get any worse in pursuit of a triumphant woman, I was in the streets of Johannesburg as a young lady. I had to work after my trip from one job to the other, um, the restaurants, being a cashier in order to finance my studies. It was not just financing my studies, I was financing a future that I wanted to see myself because I believe that education is not compressed to four walls and a teacher in front of the chalkboard. Education is how you are willing to, to allow yourself to learn from your circumstances, how you are willing to, to, to scan the environment and be truly aware of the world that you live in. That also is defined by education because we've got people who are educated but don't have life skills. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's what life skills is willingness to learn beyond just theory, but live your life with a purpose. Mm -hmm. Living your life with a purpose means that you try to find purpose in your pain. You find purpose in your past. And I was willing to pay that price. I went from one restaurant and working double shifts. And I came to Job to study. And life was not easy. Without a backup from home, it's you and you alone. Mm. And it was a time of vulnerability. I remember that is why I started being a writer. I became a poet. I started writing because I had no friends. When days are dark, there are no friends. I didn't even have few, at least if a few. I, had, I, I really had no friends. I was working with elderly women in restaurants who would sometimes vent on me. You know, sometimes when you're in the kitchens, they talk about, they'd not even realize that I was young. But it made me a, respons a responsible person. It made me to grow up so quickly because of how they were sharing their stories with someone who was so young. The truth is, children who grow up facing more challenges tend to grow up uh, much quicker and mature than just the normal kids. It actually grooms you. That's how I believe um, my sense of um, responsibility and to be self-reliant came from. When I write, when I started writing, to me, I was asking my wives, I think, that is the first thing that we do when we run into trouble in life. We ask, why me? I don't know who would have accepted that life. The truth is, whatever that you are going through is not fit for anyone else. Mm -hmm. So 
but we ask ourselves, why me? Who else, if not you, who would love to have grown up from a divorced family? Who would have loved <coughs> to grown up without parents? So why not you? And in my writing, my sharing my own vulnerability through paper, I started finding healing. Instead of writing poems of, um, I don't know if we've got Shangan people here. That's why most of our artists, when they write songs, they usually write songs of poverty and struggles because that's how they express themselves. But I found myself moving from writing, and all that. I found myself writing on courage. I found myself writing a triumphant woman. I started a book, a thick book of poems that I wrote on a triumphant woman. I was writing on a triumphant woman that I did not see. I was writing on a triumphant woman that I just hoped for. I shift from putting my perspective and my energy to the circumstances around me. Because truly, in order to transition from whatever you are to the person that you want to become, you have to shift your mindset. You have to look at the page from a different side. And I prevailed by owning the, the desire to be, become more than my circumstances. And my life turned by just shifting my perspective. As a mom today, as a wife, a business uh, woman, a go-getter, we never stop evolving. The truth is, after climbing one mountain, you realize that there are so many mountains to climb. The good thing about burning, and we are going to burn, we are forever going to burn, is that every time you get reborn, you become, you, you are born much stronger, you are born much wiser, you are born, your youth is, is renewed. The chain of becoming never ends. You climb one mountain, and when you think, oh, now I'm getting into a place of rest, you realize that the journey has just begun. We, we have to keep, in order to prevail in life, there's a quote that says that the most successful people in life are those who are able to adapt to changing circumstances. The thing is we have to keep on reprogramming ourselves. Every time we conquer, every time we move to the next level of our lives, we need to keep on reprogramming ourselves. That's why one can never stop learning. And for as long as you're a teacher, you can't stop learning unless you run out of things to teach. And that is the life that I chose as triumph, that I, I don't want to stop evolving. I don't want to stop becoming better. And I want to be that hope. I want to represent possibilities from a community that led role models. Not to stand up with a point of pride and say, look at me, but to evoke hope. To say, if I sat in this very same classroom, if I went to this very same high school, and here I am today, then it is possible for you. The later generation always have it much easier because if this classroom has broken windows today, then it was much worse 10 years ago. It's probably a better place for you. But if I could do it, then you can do it because we need more victims to come out from our communities to say, I have also walked the same path, if not worse, but here I am now to say that I also did not have the privileges, I did not have the finances, I did not have people who encouraged me. Because the reality of life is no one sometimes will encourage you fully to achieve what you want. Mm. The best motivator is not the one that you are going to pay. Mm. The best coach is not the one that you are going to pay for an hour. Mm. The best coach is always you. Mm. So we should stop looking at outside circumstances and outside people to truly help us and accompany us to, to, to our journey. The Samaritan woman that you are waiting for is you mm -hmm. and nobody else. It is then that I, 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 I started escaping the chains. When I sat down and realized in my life that I have escaped the chains and I want to be that example of hope. I want to go back to my fellow sisters and my fellow brothers to truly say that whatever that you are going through, someone went through it and overcome and you too shall overcome. Yeah. Whatever we go through in life, mm. if we are not becoming just examples, it's what we are exactly, paving the road for those who come after us. I call myself a product of grace. All that I have become, yeah. when I look at a sex worker, when I look at a hobo, when I look at a Keisha and a waitress, mm. I always see myself in them mm. and realize that I was not special. I'm only a product of grace and a yes. product of a praying woman yes. who believed in so much more without seeing. Mm. 
when you believe that your kids can become better and you don't even know that there's a gynecologist, you don't even know that uh, there are people who study media, when you don't, all these careers, we did not know about them. Mm. But I know that my grandmother appreciated education even though she did not know a door of a grade one uh, classroom. And I became the woman that I am today because there's a woman who paid forward. Yeah. And I want to pay forward for my kids. I want to pay forward for other women who say, what do I rise to? What, what is it exactly? The, I don't even know ashes, I'm a dry wood. In fact, a dry wood can catch fire. I'm just a wood that has no use, that no one would pick up. How do I look at my life and believe that I can be something? Because generational norms make us look at ourselves and think, if it has been like this, who am I? But I stand here today as triumph and represent possibilities that I am something. It is within you to pay that price to say it does not matter if you have to sacrifice. Being, um, I remember as a waitress, I got, it was the time of Carvelas and Uzi, whereby even ladies would wear Uzi jeans and Carvelas. I was saving for my studies. I could have wanted to fit in, yeah. but I had a price to pay. Mm. The thing is we try to fit in so much without realizing that we do not come from the same background. Mm. That's why success is, is not a matter of comparison. Mm. It should be measured in relative of your starting point. When I started working, I felt like my friends are more successful because they are buying cars. But I had to buy my grandmother a bed. That's why I started. But that does not mean I was not successful as they are because I was getting the same salary as them. But we usually associate success with tangible things. The greatest battles and victories that you can ever fight are internal. Where you, know, you are the only person who know where you've been. The greatest battles are the ones that you fight with tears in your pillow. And when you come out triumphant, you don't have a car to show, you don't have a house to show, but you look at yourself and say, damn girl, you're good. Yeah. Those are triumphs, yeah. and you cannot compare them with someone who has a car to show and you have nothing to show. Mm -hmm. That is still success. Most of the time, that is the mistake that once in my life I had made, made, to try to move at the same speed as everyone else mm -hmm. without realizing that I've got a different background. I've got... My mother, I've got my grandmother to look after. You have to start by building a house. I like my vendor people they build. When you go to vendor, those people they build. Mm -hmm. They do not compare themselves to first um, acquiring tangible things. Remember where you come from mm -hmm. because all that you are becoming, you are paying a price. Abraham was paying a price for us. Your mother paid a price for you. And now we stand in that gap to say this fire is not meant to burn me, it's meant to keep me so that my kids and other women do not go through the same things that I went through. I look at myself and become proud of the woman that I have become. Um, growing up as an obese child, as I had said, I never thought that I can have the confidence that I have, that I own today. Not coming from a, pr a place of pride, but coming from a place of referencing that whatever obstacles that I'm still going to face because I'm only a young woman, I can look back and say I fight my Goliath. Mm -hmm. And every other woman through my story can take their yoke and sail on to knowing that everything is possible through the power of a positive mindset. Thank you.